about earthquake damage and earthquake hazards is they're so preventable. Uh, if we build good buildings, there's no reason any building should collapse. There's no reason any person should die from an earthquake. And yet people will die. Buildings will be damaged. And there's a lot of work both to understand what needs to be done to reduce those hazards, to make people safer, and then also to provide information to people in a way that will convince them to actually take the steps necessary. That's Dr. Michael Blanby, Associate Coordinator for the USGS Earthquake Hazards Program. Join us today as we discuss the new Madrid Seismic Zone. I'm Ray Douglas, and this is Forecast, your science podcast for a changing world. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Nice to be here. What is the New Madrid Zone and, and where is it located? Well, the New Madrid Seismic Zone refers to an area in the central U.S. lying along the Mississippi River that has a, a lot of earthquake hazards. The area actually covers about eight states, Missouri, Tennessee, Arkansas, Kentucky, all the way up to Indiana, Illinois, and, and down south into southern Arkansas. So why are the earthquakes in this region so different from those occurring in the west, say, on the Pacific coast? In the western U.S., earthquakes are, of course, frequent, uh, but the seismic waves that come out of those earthquake faults don't travel very far through that young, broken up rock. So we have intense shaking right around the earthquake, and then it dies off with distance rather, rather quickly. Not so in the central and eastern U.S. Here, the rocks are old and cold, and they really ring like a bell when an earthquake strikes, and the seismic waves can travel quite far. Those earthquakes can actually be felt over perhaps half the United States. Is there an example of that? Uh, the February 1812 earthquake, which was probably in the seven to seven and a half range in magnitude, was felt all the way to the East Coast in the Carolinas. That's an incredible distance for seismic waves to carry with, that, with enough strength to be felt. I understand that this region is vulnerable to something called liquefaction. Can you tell us what that is? What liquefaction is, is when you have a saturated sandy soil, uh, it, and you shake it, the soil can actually behave like a jello. The water and the sand become suspended, and the soil loses its bearing strength and can actually flow. And when that happens, if there's a building uh, sitting on a liquefied soil, it can actually sink or tilt. A bridge abutment built on a liquefied soil will uh, tend to shift. And another thing that happens is that sometimes this liquefied sand can erupt out onto the surface and, and what we describe as a sand blow or a sand volcano. And uh, you know, ponds of water and sand form all over the landscape. It can be quite a hazard in areas like the central U.S. where there is a lot of saturated soil. Are there any other water-related um, post-earthquake effects that might affect this area? There's really a, a number of different effects that the earthquake can have. It's a large one. Uh, sloped areas can have landslides. River banks can collapse and clog the channel, making uh, the water divert or making shipping difficult. You can also have fires that can break out and be difficult to put out if the water system is compromised. You can have uh, hazardous waste that is spilled by the rupturing of tanks or whatnot. What observations are pointing toward a new major event actually occurring, and uh, what are the latest predictions? Uh, we've studied the likelihood of earthquakes of various size in the central U.S., in particular the Madrid seismic zone. Uh, we have ongoing earthquakes uh, that, that don't seem to be slowing down, these are the smaller ones. And we also have a, a geologic history that shows that these large earthquakes occurred many times in the past. We estimate that the likelihood of a magnitude 6 earthquake, uh, which would cause damage in a local area, is something on the order of 25 to 50 percent over the coming few decades. The likelihood of a magnitude 7 earthquake, something like the 1811-1812 earthquake, that's something on the order of, of 10 percent, or one chance in 10 that that will happen over, say, over the lifetime of buildings that are now being constructed. Aren't the New Madrid Zone earthquakes difficult to predict? Uh, yes, we are still struggling to understand uh, exactly how these earthquakes occur and, and where and, and when they might occur again, but but goodness, this is a time when we should be um, making sure that, that we're ready for those earthquakes if they happen again. 
Mike, what guidance or product does the USGS Earthquake Hazards Program provide right now that can help America make better decisions about earthquakes? The USGS really has two goals with respect to earthquakes in the country. One is to be able to measure them and very quickly put out information after they occur. Another is to anticipate what damage may be coming from earthquakes in the future. One of the key things that the USGS Earthquake Hazards Program produces is an assessment of the earthquake hazards in the United States. This is a map with a seismic hazard assessment map, and we update it about every five or six years. And what it depicts is the likelihood of strong shaking over, over the coming decades for the United States. Uh, this is very useful because it goes straight into building codes, for example, that dictate how strong buildings need to be in order to be safe from earthquakes. And it also gives an indication about what areas of the country are those for which people need to be aware of the hazards and learn about them and be ready so that uh, earthquakes do happen, that they're safe. Mike, thanks for talking with us and for all of the great work you and the USGS team do to help us understand and predict earthquakes. Any closing thoughts on the earthquakes here in the U.S. and those around the world? Each earthquake around the world really brings new lessons home. The earthquake in Haiti taught us the value of knowing about earthquakes. The Haitian people did not know that the earthquakes were a hazard there. They did not build with an awareness of an earthquake hazard, and therefore their buildings were not prepared and the folks were not prepared. Chile taught us a very different lesson, in fact the opposite lesson, of the value of preparation. Chile experienced one of the largest earthquakes in the, in the century. It was a magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake. It was just huge. However, Chile experiences a lot of earthquakes. The people are aware that earthquakes are a hazard, and they are prepared for them. The buildings in Chile are built to a modern code akin to that used in the United States. They use modern building techniques and, and modern structures. Now, in the central U.S., we don't have very frequent earthquakes. Uh, often people think of earthquakes as being a West Coast problem, and, and, and that is, a, is an issue uh, because there may not be... Uh, a lot of impetus felt by folks uh, in Missouri, say, Tennessee, to, to be making earthquake plans just in case one happens in the future. The thing about earthquake damage and earthquake hazards is that they're so preventable. Uh, if we build good buildings, there's no reason any building should collapse. There's no reason any person should die from an earthquake. We've been talking with Dr. Michael Blandine, Associate Coordinator for the USGS Earthquake Hazards Program. For more information on earthquakes, visit us on the web at earthquake.usgs.gov. Forecast is a product of the U.S. Department of Interior and the U.S. Geological Survey.